Hi everyone and welcome back to designing a website in Figma. Over the course of the past two episodes we have created this blog listing page and today we are going to create the article detail page, meaning the page where your users are actually gonna read an article. Let's get straight into it. Similarly to previous episodes, we are going to start our design with a hand-drawn sketch. A hand-drawn sketch is great when you want to sketch out the basic layout of your page, of your design, and it allows you to solve the biggest potential problems with your designs right away and very quickly. I almost always sketch out my designs first because it's, in my opinion, the easiest way to spot any mistakes in your thinking and to organize your thoughts really efficiently. So here is what I have prepared for this article detail page and let's examine what actually do we have here. So as you can see on the top we get some kind of section or at least uh, my intention here was to sketch out a button or a function where you can actually click that and go back to the article listing meaning essentially back to the previous page where you came from, right? And then above the main article name, the article title, the headline, we are going to get a category tag. So remember this shape, that's what we are going to be placing there, right? So this is the category tag. My intention here is to use that right above our article headline. Then we get, of course, like some details like uh, when the article was actually published, maybe even an indication of how long the reading of that article actually takes. So like five minute read or 10 minute read. And then under the article headline, I would like to have an avatar of the author with the author name and maybe a short bio or a position that they hold at a company to kind of identify who actually wrote the article then I would like this article to have a featured image right so almost every article you can see on the internet has some type of main title image and this is going to be no exception and then you would get the usual couple of sentences at the beginning that are more prominent it then goes all the way down to the end of the article where I would like to assemble a couple of related articles right so when your user finishes reading an article it's a good practice to, to suggest more articles to them so that you keep them engaged for as long as you can. And also, as you might have noticed, there is something right here within the text, um, some type of section, and this is what I would like the quote section to be, right? So whenever you want to highlight a specific part of the article, maybe something profound that, uh, that the interviewee or the author of the article actually wrote or said, maybe you want to take the sentence and put that on display like this. So that's again something that happens very frequently. So we have covered the overall structure of this design of this page. Let's actually start assembling it. And the first thing that I'll have to do is copy this blog page because we get the header and everything. Whoops. Option and drag to get a article page. I'm going to also rename this frame to article detail. And then actually I'm going to take this and just remove everything that's uh, on the page because we are going to be building the contents of this page from the ground up. And then also let me turn on the guides for now. So I'm pressing shift G on my keyboard and you can see that we enabled the, the 12 column layout that we have established before we started designing this website. Uh, I think the main text is uh, like overall, if you really notice when browsing like various articles on the web, you don't, you almost never get text that goes across the entire width of the page, right? So you never get a text column that is this wide. You usually get like, in, it's usually centered, you usually get like a text column spanning maybe six, five columns, something like that. Doesn't really matter how many columns that is precisely, but uh, one thing is for certain, you almost never see this wide article um, basically the text, right? So that would just be harder to read and would look honestly quite weird, right? So we are going to respect that, this, uh, that convention because it's simply better. So let me actually start assembling this. Uh, I'm going to use my text tool and type in this is the article top name, um, headline, right? Something that it will be approximately as long as an article name. Then I'm going to take this and change the text style to H1. So the article name is going to be the main thing on our article detail page. It's going to be like 
all the way front and center really prominent and so it has to be h1 right makes the most sense then as i said i will be using the category tag so let me go to assets and search for category tags it's right here actually just the tag right so let me use that drop that here and then move that over here awesome then let me copy this text, change the style to tagline. And if you're confused as to what I'm currently doing right now, I am using components and textiles that we have established in previous episodes. So if you want to see how we created essentially um, these uh, tokens right here and also how we created these tags, make sure to check the previous episodes. And specifically for this tag, check out the previous two episodes where we designed this blog listing page, right? I'm definitely using what I have already created during the series. Whenever you feel like you're missing something, go check my previous videos in this series. So this means that I'm going to change the text of this tagline to say, for example, February 20th, 2023. I am going to change the text resizing to auto width. So this thing right here, and then I'm going to also select both of these, press Shift A to add auto layout, and I'm going to rename this to category, category and date. So that's gonna be category and date. The spacing is gonna be 16, and the date is gonna be slightly transparent. So let's go for like 50 or 40, something like that. And then to follow this, this sketch that we are using, there will be a photo of a person. So there will be an avatar. So let me actually search for a person that we have used previously, a person photo. So let's use person number two. So I'm selecting the photo directly, copying that. And I think, or actually, why don't I use this component directly uh, with, uh, with some resizing? So I'm gonna use this photo. I'm going to move that all the way to uh, over here, over all the way to here. Then I'm going to press K on my keyboard, K, and then make sure this is half the size. So under scale, I'm going to type in 50%, right? Confirm by pressing enter and we get our avatar. I think we could go even smaller with this guy. So let's go for like 64 in terms of width. Yep. This is it, looks better, I think. Then I'm going to, again, duplicate this headline, change that to name, last name. And I will be using paragraph body text, but uh, bold, I think. I'm also gonna change the resizing of this text to auto width, um, so that we get kind of, it's automatically being resized. And then I'm going to duplicate this, change the text style to paragraph body text, and type in that this, person is working uh, pos at a position at uh, a company. That's usually the way it is with these articles. You get a person's name and then a position at a company or some short bio, whatever. We are just keeping this short. Um, I'm also going to reduce the opacity of this description to 60%. And then I'm going to select both of these, these text objects, press shift A, press enter, you know the drill, change hack contents to fill container so that we get a responsive uh, layout. I'm also going to rename this to name and position. Then I'm going to select this along with the photo and again, press shift A and rename this to author. So this is going to be our author. So now that I have that, let me also change the spacing to 16, right? 16. And then what I'm going to do is select the category and date, the headline and the author, right? That's all the elements that we wanted to do with this section, except for this button right here that I'm going to add right after. So I'm going to select these things, press shift A, and then again, select this text and set that to fill container, right? so that now when we resize this, this is what we get. I'm also gonna change this auto layout to article details. And then I'm gonna also reduce the spacing of this to 24, let's say. Does that work? Yeah, I think that does work. So we have this, this article details um, auto layout that is, you can resize that, right? You get some kind of responsive behavior. Then I'm gonna go to assets and search for a button. And it's right here. I'm gonna drop that here and then go for the no background importance. And I'm going to change the text to back to all or just 
all articles, all articles. Now, I remember that we have used an arrow already and that would be right here in the blog article component. So let me select this arrow by pressing command and clicking this arrow. Then I'm gonna press command C and command V somewhere around here so that this arrow can accompany our button that will take you back to all articles, right? I'm then gonna flip this by pressing Command H and I think I'm gonna go for a slightly smaller size. I think we could do like uh, 1.5. Does that work? Yep, I think that works. I'm also gonna reduce the width. So with this selected, I'm gonna press Enter and then move that a couple of points left um, approximately to get this width. Select both of these, Shift A, rename to go back button, right? And then I'm gonna also probably um, reduce the opacity, I think, to about 40. Or I think it would look better if we did, instead of all articles, we just did like back. M might be better. Yep, let's try that. So we have basically everything that we have outlined in this sketch for the first part of the article. And it's starting to look like we need an article image, right? So I think we could use this computer right here. I think we could just take that from here, duplicate that right here and change the size. I think we could match the width of this and the height could be reduced slightly. Yeah, I think this looks good. I think we could also add some rounding of these corners, like maybe 12, and that looks good. Yeah, this is absolutely starting to look like a tech blog, um, which is not bad, I think. Um, and now it comes to the text. So here is the thing, right? If you want to design, for example, an article, right, that we are designing right now, you wanna use serif fonts. So the font that I would like to use for our article is Meriwether, right? So this is the article text that I think could work nicely for our article. I think if we reduce the size to like 18 maybe, this is just generally better if you want to read longer, longer texts essentially. So here's the thing, we are going to need to create a new text style. So I'm going to take this Meriwether font. I'm going to include some more lines, essentially. I think we could go for like 140% in terms of line height, 140%, maybe even 150%. Let's try it out. Mm, yes, I think that could. So Meriwether bold 16 points, or actually let's go for regular for now. And this is going to be our article font. So let me select this and then go to text and te under textiles, I'm gonna create a style and name this style article, just blog body text, right? Blog body text. And then we can also do another version of this, which is going to be bold or maybe black. Let's try that. Mayweather black 16, 150%. And that's gonna be new text style, blog body text, oops, body text bold. Right, so we have now blog body text and blog body text bold. Brilliant. Um, now I'm gonna copy in a bunch of lorem ipsum. Lorem ipsum, everybody knows that. So let me actually pick a couple of sentences from somewhere in the, approximately in the middle. Then I'm gonna copy this, paste that in, and this is gonna be our initial paragraph, right? So this part right here. Let me move that over here. And then the rest is gonna be right below. And yeah, essentially, yeah, there you go. There, this is an article text. And also I think we could go for not really 100% black, but reduce the opacity of this to like 60, maybe something that is pleasant to read, 65. I don't know, 66. So now that we have that out of the way, let me actually select these three elements. Let me select this text, the initial paragraph and the image, press Shift A, press Enter, set that to fill container, and now we get this, right? I'm gonna rename this to article contents and change the spacing to approximately 232, let's say. Right, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is select the article detail, details, auto layout, the go back button, auto layout, and the article contents, auto layout, and again, shift A, enter, fill container, shift enter, and then reduce that again to, I think this could be 
48, right? So this is gonna be 48. And this is going to be called article container. And here's the thing, when you take a look at this, it is responsive, so that's awesome, right? So all the text and the images and the section is just being, it just reflects the article container size. So that's awesome. Um, I'm gonna take this and move that onto this page, right? So let me move that onto this page. Let me also increase the, at the height of this. Then let me just make sure it's, it's centered, right? So Command H or actually Alt uh, or option H and then let me make sure this spans over the six middle columns right so 564 pixels and yeah there you go let me turn off the guides 100% size this is it let me also reduce or actually change the background of this to completely white and yeah this is our article page right we are going to resume working on our article detail page uh, in the next episode where we are going to create the related article section and then also the quote section but I'm afraid that if we went over these uh, it would just simply take too much time so this is uh, basically the simplest form of an article page and yeah in the next episode you're gonna see some extras as I said quotes and related articles. And just let's take a moment right now and let's preview this in the prototype mode. Let's do that. Right, so let me select this and go to prototype. So yeah, looks like an article. We're just using simple colors, black and white, um, fonts with decreased opacity so that it's easier to read. And yeah, I think it looks quite clean, simple. That's the way I'd like to go. Thanks for tuning in and watching all the way to the very end. And I will see you in the next episode of designing a website in Figma.